Hello students, welcome to BioDigest. Let me just retell a beautiful thought. Love the life you live, live the life you love. A meaningful thought, isn't it? With this, let us begin today's biology portions. Today in this particular video, we are going to discuss about the heart. Please do watch my previous videos for more details related to the circulatory system. So let us discuss where is the heart located. Location is very important for the board exam. The heart is located between the two lungs and above the diaphragm. So where is the location of the heart? The heart is located between the two lungs and above the diaphragm. This is the correct location that you have to write for the board exams. Now when you are just touching on your chest region, you may be feeling the heartbeat to be on the left side. So you may think that the heart is located on the left side. It is not so. Then why are you feeling that heartbeat to be on the left side? During the functioning of the heart, the contraction is most powerful at this particular point, giving us a feeling that the heart is actually located on the left side. But it is not so. Where is the location of the heart? It is located between the two lungs and above the diaphragm. Now, heart you know. It is actually a very delicate organ. So it needs protection. It is actually having a two membranous protective covering. Which is what is called as pericardium. So pericardium is a double membranous covering that is actually providing protection to the heart. Now this pericardium is actually filled with a fluid which is what is called as pericardial fluid. Now for the board exam again question can come what is the function of pericardial fluid? So pericardial fluid actually reduces friction during the heartbeat and it also protects the heart from mechanical injuries. That is the function of pericardial fluid. Now what about the size of the heart? The size of the heart will be almost equal to the size of your closed fist. Okay, this is the closed fist. So this will be the size of my heart. Okay, so it is actually equal to the size of closed fist. So let us discuss the structure of the heart. The human heart is actually having four chambers. Let us see what are they first. So you can see this is my right side and this is the left side. Okay, so... This is the right side, this is the left side of the heart already marked as R and L. R standing for right side, L standing for left side. Now which we will see which are the four chambers. We are having two upper chambers called as the auricles. Otherwise called as atria. So I'll be writing the short form. This is the right auricle or right atria and this is the left auricle or the left atria. So two chambers. Similarly, we are having two chambers below which are called as the ventricles. I'm writing RV for right ventricle and LV for left ventricle. Now you can see that the left side, the left ventricle is having a thick muscular wall. Okay, this is actually the muscular wall. Whereas the right ventricle it is having a thin muscular wall. Question can come, why is it so? Why the left ventricle is having a thick muscular wall than the right ventricle? So what is the reason? 
it is because it is the left ventricle that is actually pumping the blood the oxygenated blood from the heart to all the parts of the body that is up to the toes up to the head etc so as it is pumping the blood to larger distances it actually requires a thick muscular wall this is actually to withstand the pressure okay because it is pumping the blood with great pressure to all these parts of the body so that is why the left ventricle is having a thick muscular wall and the right ventricle is having a thin muscular wall because the right ventricle just have to pump the blood from the heart to the lungs that is for oxygenation purpose so it is actually pumping the blood only for a shorter distance whereas the left ventricle is pumping the blood to a longer distance in the body so that is about the thick muscular wall that is present on the left ventricle and the thin muscular wall that is present on the right ventricle now you can see the right auricle is actually receiving two blood vessels one is called as the anterior vena cava otherwise called as superior vena cava what is the function of anterior vena cava or superior vena cava it is this anterior vena cava the blood vessel that will be carrying the blood from all the upper parts of the body to the heart for oxygenation purpose so what type of blood is brought by this anterior vena cava it is bringing deoxygenated blood to the heart for oxygenation purpose now you can see one more blood vessel this is the posterior vena cava so what is the function of posterior vena cava posterior vena cava will be bringing the blood from all the lower regions of your body like toes then legs etc to the heart again for oxygenation okay so we have completed anterior vena cava posterior vena cava the two blood vessels that is actually entering into the right auricle so they are bringing what type of blood they are bringing the oxygenated blood into the right atrium or the right auricle now between the right auricle and the right ventricle there is a three flap like structure present a three cusp like structure which is what is called as the tricuspid valve i am labeling it, it with another colored pen really where is the tricuspid valve located the location is very very important it is also called as the right atrioventricular valve because it is present between the auricle and the ventricle so it's also called as the atrioventricular valve it is located at the aperture between the right auricle and the right ventricle that is the location of tricuspid valve tricuspid that means it is having three cusp like structure which will be opening like this okay so that is what is marked in green for you to easily understand now arising from the right ventricle you can see here that is actually a blood vessel that will be carrying the blood away from the heart to where it is carrying the blood away from the heart to the lungs so which will be that particular blood vessel it is artery artery always carries the blood away from the heart to any other organ so here there is a particular artery that is carrying the deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation so as it is associated with lungs we can call this artery as pulmonary artery pulmonary means something related to lungs 
artery i told you it's a blood vessel that carries blood away from the heart so pulmonary artery is carrying the blood from the right ventricle the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle into the two lungs for oxygenation purpose okay so this is the pulmonary arteries that is entering into the two lungs which carries deoxygenated blood into the lungs for oxygenation purpose so that is about the right side of the heart now coming to the left side of the heart you can see here there are only two i have shown okay these are actually called as the veins so veins what will be the function veins is any blood vessel that will be bringing the blood towards the heart okay so here you can see that from each lung two pulmonary veins will be arising so you are having two lungs so how many pulmonary veins will be there in total from the right lung two pulmonary veins and the left lung two pulmonary veins so in total four pulmonary veins will be bringing oxygenated blood into the heart so vein is any blood vessel that will be bringing the blood into the heart so this is actually bringing the blood from where it is bringing the blood from the lungs so as it is associated with lungs we can use the term pulmonary so as it is bringing the blood into the heart we will be calling that blood vessel as a vein so there are four pulmonary veins that is actually bringing the blood into the left auricle or the left atrium okay so what type of blood is brought into the left atrium it is bringing oxygenated blood now between the left atrium and the left ventricle again there is an atrioventricular valve present which is actually having two cusps so it is called as the bicuspid valve otherwise also called as mitral valve so it's like this opening like this okay bicuspid or mitral valve which will be opening from the left auricle into the left ventricle so where is the bicuspid or the mitral valve located how will you write the answer it is located at the aperture between the left auricle and the left ventricle now arising from the left ventricle is the largest blood vessel which is called as aorta okay so this is the aorta that is arising from the left ventricle it is through this aorta the oxygenated blood is pumped to all the parts of your body at the point of origin of aorta from the left ventricle there is a valve present it is known as aortic semi lunar valve why we are using the term semi lunar it is because it is resembling the half moon shape okay so here there will be a valve present which is known as the aortic semi lunar valve likewise on the right side at this opening of the pulmonary artery again here a valve is present that is also a semi lunar valve which is also called as the pulmonary semi lunar valve so pulmonary semi lunar valve is actually present at the origin of pulmonary artery from the right ventricle aortic semi lunar valve is present at the origin of aorta from the right, left ventricle okay so why are these valves called as semi lunar valves because they are actually having the shape of a half moon let us recall location of the heart the heart is located between the two lungs and above the diaphragm covering the heart is protected by a double walled membranous covering called pericardium it contains a lubricating pericardial fluid 
which reduces friction during heartbeat and protects the heart from mechanical injuries chambers of the heart the heart consists of four chambers the two upper atria and the two lower ventricles blood vessels entering the heart anterior vena cava or superior vena cava this brings deoxygenated blood from the upper regions of the body including head chest arms etc into the right atrium posterior or inferior vena cava this brings blood from the lower regions of the body including abdomen and lungs into the right atrium blood vessels leaving the heart the pulmonary artery this arises from the right ventricle and carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs for oxygenation the aorta it arises from the left ventricle and carries oxygenated blood to supply it to all parts of the body please do subscribe bio digest like and share thank you